Thank you for listening to episode seven of the Catholic Servant Podcast. And I'm your host, Alexandra Kupabatu. This is where we feature faithful individuals in business, ministries, and apostolates who strive to give glory to God in all things while sharing valuable business or work-related tips and inspirational messages with like-minded Catholics just like you. Today, our special guest is author Joanna Walland. And let me tell you a little bit more about her. And she was baptized, raised, and married in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. In May 2003, two weeks after graduating from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities with a degree in English, she converted to Catholicism. She's a North Dakota native and she fled from that freezing north cold weather and migrated for the sunny skies of Arizona in 2008. Now she has six terrific kids here on earth and four little saints in heaven praying for her. And she's got a wonderful husband of 17 years who supports her in all things. Now she worked outside the home as an editor for over a decade, but now works as chief cook and bottle washer for La Casa Walland, in addition to volunteering as senior editor for catholicstand.com. And um, you, we can find her on the website at uh, www.catholicworkingmom.com. Now, Joanna, it recently wrote a book and Joanne I want to thank you so much for being a guest with us today because this book is absolutely amazing it just caught my attention the title of it because it's for Catholic working mothers and we if you're a Catholic working mother in any in any sense we can definitely identify with a lot of the things that you talked about in your book tell us a little bit more about your your book and um and who do you serve sure well uh, I started the Catholic working mothers Facebook group in 2014 and uh, that was basically the the inspiration for the book was um reading you know, the varied experiences of all the women who, who joined the group and what they struggled with and what they went through. And I, I really started the group and then um, later on my Facebook page and my, my blog and whatnot, um, because while all mothers work hard on a daily basis, uh, mothers who earn a wage in addition to the responsibilities of their vocation often have a unique set of challenges. So the purpose of my Facebook group and and my book is to provide support and encouragement to Catholic working mothers as we juggle our competing priorities. And I also aim to provide fellowship with other Catholic mothers as we raise our children in the faith while navigating an increasingly secular society. Yes, and I'm part of that group because I am a Catholic working mom. I really need that kind of support because, um, like you mentioned in the book, there's a lot of mom guilt out there. And are we making uh-huh. the right decision? Are we making the wrong decision? Some of us are raised certain ways. Times are different now. I don't know. But uh, what kind of insight it, can you they give They really us? are. It's just hard. I talk about this in my book, but it's, it's harder and harder these days to make it work on one income. I mean, cost of living has increased and at a rapid rate and salaries have just not kept up. And I mean, and there are some expense, you know, and the expenses like health insurance and um, even if if you want to have a large family, just affording a vehicle large enough to hold your whole family costs a lot. And then paying for the insurance for it costs a lot. And, you know, there's just there's a lot of expenses and sometimes you just need two incomes just to make ends meet. Right, absolutely. <laughs> really inspired by the stories that you give in your book because you give a lot of examples of saints who also worked and lived in the in the in the out in the world and had businesses and had jobs and so tell me what which saint um I mean you mentioned several saints. Is there a particular one that you kind of gravitate to? Yes, definitely uh Saint Gianna Redamola. Um, she's the patroness of working mothers and she's the patroness of the Facebook group. And she's also my personal patroness because Gianna is the Italian form of Joanna. Oh, I so didn't know that. <laughs> she's, it's like a triple threat. Yeah. So, um, I, I find her so, so inspiring because she, she's an example of somebody who didn't work because she had to, she worked because she felt, she truly felt in her heart. She had a vocation from God to serve the poor and the needy in her community with her medical skills, with her medical degree. And her husband was an engineer. And 
So I'm, you know, assuming that it wasn't strictly necessary for her to work. She, she did it because she felt called by God to do so. And she continued working basically up until the birth of her fourth child. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just, I just find that so, so inspiring. All you can do is try to discern what God is calling you to do and then do it. And that might be working outside the home. It might be working from home. It might be not working at all for a season. And, you know, it, and it can change. You know, maybe God will, it calls you to work outside the home for a few years. And then he calls you to leave your job and not work for a while. Or, it, you know, you, it, it just needs, it's continual discernment. It's sort of like, mm -hmm. I compare it in the book to, to discerning how many children you're going to have. Mm -hmm. You know, you and your husband are the only one who can who can do that, and you're the only one who, the only ones who are intimately familiar with the, your own personal circumstances that affect your decision, and it's something you have to do on a continual basis, depending on your individual circumstances. I know that you mentioned some um, tools of discernment. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, I, I totally made this up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I, I basically personally use three aspects to throw discernment. And I, in my book, I call them the three I's. And those are information, which is, you know, gathering all the information about your circumstances that you have, about your finances, your health, what your schedule is like, logistically how things work in terms of picking up and dropping off and attending appointments or meetings or whatever you need to do um, and, and gathering all that information. So it's at your fingertips and making your decision and making your decisions with all that information available to you. So you can factor in everything and um, invocation, which is prayer, worship, con contemplation, you know, praying the rosary, praying a novena, you know, making sure you're going to mass, getting to daily mass if you can, but that's not always possible. Um, spending time in adoration if you can. Even some women have even gone on a retreat when they have like a discernment um, decision to make regarding a, a new job or leaving their job or something. They've, they've gone on just like a weekend retreat or even an overnight retreat to try to spend some quiet time with God and try to figure out um, what he wants them to do. And then the third is intuition, which is basically just following your gut and trying to follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And even if all your data says to do one thing, if your gut is saying, no, don't do this, you know, it might, might be best to listen to your gut mm -hmm. or listen to your conscience, depending. So th those, are the, those are the tools I use. Wow. That, and that's very helpful. I, I, I could have used that a couple of years ago. <laughs> but um, honestly, I, I went into the, my current um, job kicking and screaming, basically. <laughs> but, uh, but sometimes that's how it how is. That <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's just how it is. And um, yeah. I'm, I'm in a position where I can help others in my job. So that that part of it makes it fulfilling. And it gives me a purpose, you know, outside of mm -hmm. um, my home. Um, what parish do you attend, by the way? I go to St. Clair of Assisi in Surprise, Arizona. Oh, wonderful. And I'm, I'm, ve I'm very fortunate that I actually live right behind my parish. The, uh, the back fence of our backyard borders the parking lot of the parish. Oh, so really? So <laughs> I, can, I can look outside, you know, every, every day, every morning and see the cross on top of the church right outside uh -huh. my bedroom window. Wow. So it's, it's a really great... Uh, great parish and a great location that we live in so wow that is nice so mm -hmm. uh, blessed to be close to the lord in, in, in yeah you know. it's really yeah. nice <laughs> right and are you involved in any other, any other ministries or apostolates or anything like that like with the church yeah i'm pretty active i'm pretty active in my parish's catholic daughters of the americas organization oh, wow and um my my two of my my oldest two daughters are also in the junior Catholic daughters. Oh, there's and a junior. Then, uh, wow. Yep. And I'll, although it's not a strictly Catholic organization, I'm right. also active in my daughter's American Heritage Girls troop. Oh. But it, it's faith. It's faith based. So it's it's sort of like a ministry. And there are there are other Catholic families who belong to that as well. So. 
Yeah, wow, that's awesome. I, I my daughter yeah. is also part of American Heritage Girls here at one at, at uh, St. Francis of Assisi here in San Antonio. So that's awesome. That's I great. I love that group. Yay. Yes, I know. And we also live like right across the street from our parish, St. Matthew's. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I know. So we hear church it's bells so in the convenient. morning. It is. It is. Um, granted, what I like best yeah. is that on like on high traffic days, like you know Christmas <laughs> or Easter or you know Palm Sunday or whatever, we can just walk to church yeah. and avoid the whole nightmare that's parking. It's so nice. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. And yeah, we love that too. Now, one thing I want to touch upon that you talked about in your book, <laughs> which really intrigued me, was about homemaking. <laughs> home management yeah. and all that stuff because I am I stink <laughs> at home management my husband can run circles around me but <laughs> I'm glad because he's the one home right now but um yeah. oh my goodness home home management is not my forte um what kind of insight or encouragement can you give us working moms when it comes to that because I know others that struggle too so what what kind of advice do you have? My my biggest advice is hire help. I mean, out, outsource everything you can, especially if you're in a situation where both of you are working. Mm-hmm. And it's easier said than done because even, you know, with two incomes, it can be, you know, money can be tight and there there's not a lot in the budget. But there, there was a time when both my husband and I were working and I was pregnant with, I think it was my fourth child. And we were able to afford a housekeeper to come every two weeks and do like mopping floors, cleaning bathrooms. She'd finish up the dishes if there were some on the counter, um, that kind of thing. And it was it was so nice. Wow, it was such a stress. It was such a stress relief because I I was at that point where I would basically stay her in the door after work and collapse onto the couch because I was in the first trimester of pregnancy and I was sick all the time and it was all I could do to get through the day at work, let alone get any housework done. You know, so, and, and so basically we had the housekeeper come in every two weeks and that was a relief because I didn't have to stress myself about mopping the floors or cleaning the bathrooms or whatever, because I knew it would get done eventually, probably not by me. And I just, I focused on meals and laundry and that was it. You know, my husband and I worked together on making sure everybody could eat and everybody had clean clothes and we were able to kind of outsource the rest. And that was that was so nice. Um, But not everybody can afford that, which is unfortunate. (laughs) But um, (laughs) no, but yeah, you know, the other thing, I mean, they're like robot vacuums now and mops, which a lot of people in the in my in the Facebook group just swear by. Oh, really? Um, So, (laughs) yeah, like, you know, and they're they're not as expensive as they used to be now you can get one for you if you can find a good sale you can get one for about 150 dollars um but they're cool. usually more around two three hundred dollars but a lot of members just love them because you can just set them to run at night when everybody's asleep and you wake up in the morning and your floors are so much cleaner and and that's apparently i haven't gotten one yet but i'm i'm contemplating yeah um, that's a good idea you know, and, and you know and I- then the so, so just, you know, and grocery pickup has saved my life. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I love it. I, you know, it's not for everybody, but personally, I love being able to just order groceries on, make my list on the app, order online and go pick, pick them up. And I don't even have to get out of the car. I don't have to get any kids out of the car. Um, when I was working, I, I was able just to pick up the groceries on my way home from work. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. I, it still is amazing. I still do it even though I'm not working anymore. And it I don't have to waste two or three hours in the grocery because that's how long it used to take me. I shop, you know, I feed eight people. <laughs> and, you know, so I would have to go to the grocery store and spend two or three hours getting all the food. And if I had kids with me, I'd have to be wrangling them. And uh-huh. it, was, it was just time out of my day I did not want to spend. And that's so much easier now that I don't have to do that. And I have fewer impulse buys now because I don't have kids going, Mommy, can we get this? Mommy, can we get that? And I'm like, oh, fine. Oh, I don't even want to argue about it. I think I'd probably do it so. just for that reason because I think I always spend an extra 50, yeah. 50 to $75 more in impulse buys. 
<laughs> I know. And Amazon Prime has been fantastic, too, because I resisted getting a Prime membership for a long time because mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know, it's kind of expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it is so handy for, you know, if a kid comes home and, and they're like, oh, I need a, I need a, you know, old fashioned person costume for a skit in three days. That I forgot to tell you about until right now. I can just get on Amazon and order one, and it's here in two days, and I don't have to. I don't have to like go hunting through thrift stores trying to find one yeah. or whatever. Wow. And you know, and things just things. Or or I get home from the grocery store with a load of groceries, and my husband's like, "Oh, did you forget the X Y Z?" And I'll be like, "Yep." So I'm just going to order it from Amazon, so I don't have to go back to the store. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. or things like that, you know. That's... And uh, or or things if if they need you know, treats for school or something special to bring to school or anything like that. It's been a lifesaver for me. So, and then, but my, my one major piece of advice would be not to make perfect the enemy of the good. And I struggle with this a lot because I'm just like, well, if, if it's not going to be perfect, I shouldn't even bother trying because it's not, it's not going to get any good that I have to, I'm trying to school myself out of that mindset and, learn that you know what even if I don't mop the floor perfectly if it gets mopped a little bit that's okay Mm -hmm. even if the towels aren't folded perfectly at least they're in the linen closet and people can find them when they need to shower even if you know my oldest one cleans the toilet bowl and it's not perfect that's okay it's better than it was so that that's the biggest and hardest lesson I've had to learn as I'm as I try to balance things I love that. Thank you for all that practical advice. I I wrote it down as you were speaking because (laughs) (laughs) I think my husband and my husband's been eyeing that that automatic uh, sweeper thing, that little machine Mm -hmm. that goes around and does that. And I'm like, I'm old school. I don't know if I, you know, is it really going to do the job? And then you know what? You're like the third person now who tells me just try it because (laughs) it don't work. I mean, I guess I'm not the outsource what you can. Yes, absolutely, (laughs) Joanna. Thank you so much so much and thank you so Mm -hmm. much for joining us today in this episode and I know you're going to make a lot of um, inspire a lot of mothers and give a lot of um, working moms peace of mind uh, like you've given me so thank you so much for that okay so Joanna so before we end this episode can you please tell us when your book is going to be released and where can we find it absolutely it's called the Catholic Working Mom's Guide to Life it's being released by Our Sunday Visitor Press on May 28th, 2019. And right now it's available for pre-order on both Amazon and Barnes & Noble. And I want to like to end this episode um, with a prayer. Great. Dear God, thank you so much for allowing us to hear the inspirational and words of wisdom from Joanna Walland. Please bless her and her family and her beautiful her beautiful work and ministry that she has with this book. And, and may she continue to do your will and inspire others. We place her and her entire family and all of her, her good works in your hands. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Joanna. God yes, bless. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you all. Thank you.